Thanks for joining us. Today we're going to go over a few of the problems that might occur on the Easy View app. If this is how it looks when you open up your app, then I think you've come to the right place. Let's go over a couple of solutions that might help get you on your way. First, we're going to go over network setup. If you have a network that is not properly set up, then your Easy Cloud will be offline. If it's offline, then there's nothing you're going to be able to do to get the Easy View to work. So Let's go ahead and go over to the network settings and we're going to check a few things. So right now I have a static IP that's been assigned to the NVR, but this static IP is actually not correct for my network. So I'm going to enable DHCP, hit apply. I like to go out of the menu just so that it'll refresh, go back into the network menu, and now you see that we have a new IP address. But it's still going to be offline on the Easy Cloud. This is because my router did not actually hand the NVR a DNS server address, and we have to have some sort of DNS server in order to make it function. I'm going to go ahead and use the generic DNS servers that are common with Google, and you can just go ahead and see them on the screen here. And after I apply those, it may take a few seconds, but you go back over to your Easy Cloud. To kind of speed things up, I'm just going to disable it, hit apply, go back, enable it again, hit apply, and then go to network, and then go back to Easy Cloud just to see if it's gone back online. If not, don't worry about it. It'll just take a couple of minutes and it should come online on its own. And that's about it. You can go back into the EasyView app and go and scan your recorder and you should be able to get a live view working at this point. If you're still having problems, then we will go into problem number two, port mapping conflicts. This problem is when you have your camera on live view just keeps spinning or connects very rarely. Uh, sometimes this can only affect certain phones and it'll work fine with others, but we're going to go into the menu, go to network, go to advanced, and then to port mapping. And what we're going to do is uncheck enable port mapping. Hit apply. And then after that, you can go back into the app. Go ahead and hit refresh on the app. And if you get a live view, then that was your problem. If not, then we move into problem number three. The next topic is going to be updating your firmware. Uniview has made this part really simple. If you see a red dot, you can click your recorder, click P2P update, and it will enter into the firmware section. You can see that next to our recorder we have a red dot, so if we tap our NVR, you'll see that there is a newer version of the firmware. You hit start upgrade, followed by upgrade. I found that it never actually changed the status on my upgrade, but when it was done, I did get the message upgrade completed at the bottom. After you get this message, go ahead and give your NVR several more minutes because it most likely is going to start a reboot cycle, and you don't want to start trying to do any firmware updates while it's in the middle of that. If you're not at the NVR when you're doing the upgrades, you can go back to the main menu like I did, refresh, and you'll see that your NVR is offline. Once it has completed its reboot cycle, uh, you, when you refresh, the NVR will show up as a blue icon again, and then you can go back in and attempt to do the upgrade on any cameras that also need firmware updates. Okay, now that the NVR is blue, we're going to go back into P2P upgrade, and you can see there are two cameras. I'm going to select both of those cameras and hit upgrade to start their firmware update process as well. This process takes about two to five minutes, so I'm gonna speed up the video, and when it is done, we will continue. Keep in mind that it does take a couple of minutes after the upgrade process for the camera to finish its reboot cycle. But after the cameras are done, you should be able to go back into your recorder, hit start live view, and have all of your camera views displayed very quickly. 
The next one is really obvious if you had a device shared to you because if it is expired, you'll no longer see it in your devices. The only way to resolve this problem is to have the person who is the owner of the NVR go back into the sharing menu, decide which cameras or NVR they want to share with you, decide the function or user level controls they want to give you, and then have them pay special attention to the valid period. By default, it's only one month. So if you leave it by default, in a month, your sharing is going to expire and you're gonna to have to go through this whole process again. If this is meant to be a long-term share, go in and set it out several years. That way you don't have to deal with it again unless you want to manually cancel that sharing. After entering the share to address, you hit share and you should see shared successfully. The next problem just has to do with when you've already added an NVR to the EasyView app, but you add new cameras to it after the case. So you can add cameras in two ways. The first way is to hit the plus icon in any of the blank spaces, then hit the recorder that you would like to fill that camera from, and then tap the camera on the list that shows up. The other way is to, let's first delete this, go into the camera add icon in the top right corner then you will see the recorders in your list. You tap the recorder and then you will select the cameras that you want to add. And then when you're done, hit start live view. Hopefully this helped you with resolving an issue with the Easy View app. And if this video helped you out, we would really appreciate a thumbs up and if you could subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.